Good morning. Welcome to Harmony. Would you stand up with us? I'm glad to see each and every one of you here this morning. We're just going to lift up the name of Jesus this morning. We're going to praise him for who he is, how he loves us. I'm glad you're here to worship with us this morning. Even the Jesus freak here on the third row. Good to see you this morning, Rocky. Let's sing about his name. At your name, the mountains shake and crumble. At your name, the oceans roar and tumble. At your name, angels will bow, the earth will rejoice, your people cry out. Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, sing up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name. your name, the morning breaks in glory, at your name, creation sings your story, at your name, angels will bow, the earth will rejoice, your people cry out. Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, sailing up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name. There is no one like our God, we will praise you, praise you. There's no one like our God, we will sing, we will sing. There is no one like our God, we will praise you, praise you. There's no one like our God, we will sing, we will sing. There is no one like our God, we will praise you, praise you. There's no one like our God. We will sing, we will sing. There is no one like our God. We will praise you, praise you. There's no one like our God. We will sing. Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name. Filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh. We love and shout your name, O oh Lord of all the earth. We shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love and shout your name, O oh Lord. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love and shout your name, O oh Lord. Awesome singing this morning. You can be seated. I was buried beneath my shame. Think about this. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you.
Welcome to a glorious day on the inside at Harmony. How many of you think it's a little cold outside this morning? Uh, how many of you wish it would warm up just a little bit? All right. We're going to go ahead and just like cancel service and have a prayer meeting for a little warmth. All right. Really, it's not that bad. We're just kind of spoiled this winter so far. Uh, we're, we're used to things being a little warmer than, than what it is today, but we are going to survive it. I am thrilled that you made the choice to come out and be with us today. Uh, we're going to have an excellent time as we worship together. When you came in, you received a worship guide, and in that worship guide, it just tells you some of the things that are taking place, not only today, uh, but maybe a couple of weeks out. I want to encourage you uh, to pay attention and uh, do all you can to participate in the different opportunities that are there. At the bottom of that worship guide is a connection card. In that connection card, you have the opportunity, if you're a first-time guest, to just uh, share some information. Uh, let us know how you heard about Harmony, and if you got any prayer requests or would like more information, please include that on there. You can detach that, bring it out to Main Street uh, at the Connection Center, and we have a gift that we would love to send home with you, and we would just like to learn more about you and be able to connect with you. So if you would help us with that, we would greatly appreciate it. If you uh, would like to go ahead and download the Harmony app, uh, you can go over to the uh, Apple Store uh, or the Google Store. You can download that app, and you can fill out that connection card. Uh, if you're a regular tender, member, first-time guest, whatever it might be, you can do it that way. Uh, and if you have prayer requests, you can submit that. We would love the opportunity to stay in touch with you as you go throughout your week. We won't send you uh, 150 push notifications throughout the week, but if something takes place uh, and, and we need to get that information to you we will use that uh, and that would benefit you uh, and help us uh, communicate clearly uh, with you so if you would like to do that we would encourage you uh, to do that well again i want to thank you for coming out and worshiping with us in just a couple of minutes uh, dave and the, the team is going to lead us in a couple of more songs and we're going to continue our series entitled brand new and in this series brand new we're not just talking about brand new from a standpoint of a brand new year we're talking about the fact that everybody is known for something so we're asking the question 
What do we want to be known for? What did Jesus say? This is what the church needs to be known for. If you're a follower of Christ today, it's going to be a really practical message. Uh, and if you would say, I'm not certain that I'm a follower of Christ, I, I promise you this. It'll help us see clearly what a follower of Christ is, is really all, all about from a, a biblical standpoint, what we can do and what he wants us to be and how he wants us to live. And I know it's going to be a, a message that'll make a difference in our lives. Well, we've got a lot to pray about today, and we are in 28 days of prayer, and we've been giving you some resources uh, from Dave Early. We've been sending out some emails. We've placed them uh, on our website, uh, 28 days of prayer, some resources uh, that we can go ahead and uh, share with you, and today is day 15, and that's just a day where we gather and we're praying as a church, and one of the things that we're praying for today as a church, and I just want to ask you to pray for, is our outreach, uh, local Locally and globally. A little bit later in the service, we're going to tell you about an outreach opportunity that anyone that would like to uh, can, can get connected with, and Dave Thomas is, is going to share that. Uh, but we're praying that uh, God would bless our outreach efforts right here uh, in our community and beyond, uh, in, in our local community. And then we're asking God to bless as we prepare to go to Guatemala in just a couple of weeks to make a difference there in the hearts and lives of the people of Guatemala. So we're going to join our hearts uh, in prayer for those requests. We're also praying for those that uh, are on our uh, hospital list, those that are sick, uh, that having some, some difficulty. And, and there's a lot of sickness that is uh, taking place and, and it's kind of uh, running through the church. We want you to pray uh, for somebody. If you know they're sick, please go ahead, uh, pray for them. If you don't see them here, uh, make certain that you pray for them and get in touch with them this week and let them know that they are missed. Let's go ahead and open in prayer today. Father, we come to you today and we thank you for who you are. We thank you uh, for all that you've done and, and all that you're going to do. And God, as we join our hearts uh, in prayer today, I ask that you would help us as we reach out locally. God, that you would help us to love our community as, as we love you. God, that you would help us to see a need and not just see the need, but Father, to meet the need. And to see the people that we're meeting the need in their life. Father, I ask that you would help us as we prepare to go to Guatemala, that you would give our, our church a, a continued heart and a greater heart for the people locally and the, the people globally, that you would help us to take your message to a lost and, and hurting world, whether it's doing medical mission or, or whether it's going and teaching children about Christ in the village or right here in our community. I pray that you would help us to realize the importance of that. Father, we join our hearts together today, and there are many that are sick. There are, are many that are, are struggling. God, they need strength and encouragement from you. And, and Lord, I pray that you will help us to just call out to heaven and to believe on their behalf. And Father, to believe because you've told us to believe. You've told us we can trust you. And, and Father, I ask that you would help us to trust you today and help us to call out to you. So Father, give us a greater heart for our community and for the world. And Lord, I ask that you would help us to do that together. Be with those, Father, that are on the list. Please meet the need that's represented in their life. For it's in Christ's name, amen. Amen. Would you stand with us this morning? The reason we can come boldly before his throne in prayer is because he is in control. He loves us. He wants the best for us. As we sing these next couple songs, think about how we can join together and pray with power and taking a stand of what God can do in our lives. Sing with me on this verse right here. You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man you are not a god in need of anything we can get by your plan that's just the way it is let's sing that verse again just think about those words you are not a god created by human hands you are not a God dependent on any poor man. You are not a God in need of anything we can get by your plan. 
that's just the way it is. You are God alone from before time began. You were on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. You're the only God whose power none can contend. You're the only God whose name and praise will never end. You're the only God who's worthy of everything we can give. You are God, that's just the way it is. You are God alone from before time began. You were on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. Unchangeable, you're unshakable, you're unstoppable, that's what you are. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne, you are God alone, and right now. The good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. You're unchangeable. You're unshakable. You're unstoppable. That's what you are. You're unchangeable. You're unshakable. You're unstoppable, that's what you are. You're unchangeable, you're unshakable, you're unstoppable, that's what you are. You're unchangeable, you're unshakable. That's what you are. You're unchangeable. You're unshakable. You're unstoppable. That's what you are. Because he's unshakable and unstoppable, we can take a stand on everything that he stands for. Sing the stand with me this morning. You stood before creation, eternity in your hand. You spoke the earth into motion, my soul now to stand. You stood before my failure. Carry the cross for my shame. My sin weighed upon your shoulders, my soul now to stand. Good question. 
question right here. What can I say? And what can I do? Here's the key. But offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. So I walk upon salvation, for spirit alive in me, my life to declare your promise, my soul now to stand. So what can I say? ourselves to you. You are worthy of that. And Father, as we've just completed just singing praise to your name, I pray that you would just continue to be with us and let us feel your presence, that you would open up the word of truth this morning, touch our hearts, open our minds. And Father, just show us the way that you would have us to be together this morning. Father, again, I'm thankful for Harmony. I'm thankful for Pastor John. I pray that you would just empower him right now, give him the words to speak. We thank you and praise you for all that you do for us. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Well, we are in a series entitled Brand New. And as I said just a couple of moments ago, it's not about a brand new season. It's not about a brand new year necessarily. It's, it's about what we're known for and what we want to be known for. Everyone is known for something. Let me ask you this question. What do you want to be known for? When you stop and, and look at Jesus, Jesus was, was known in, in his day as, as someone who was really counterculture. He showed up on the scene, and, and it wasn't what people expected. I, I mean, he was born in, in a, and placed in a manger, came into this world in, in a stable, and, and would go to a very common place. And, and people said, that's not what we expected. When, when he came and he talked with people, he, he would literally bring healing into their life, and, and he would meet a spiritual need. But they were searching for someone who would meet a political need, and maybe who would address some oppression. It was a little different than what they expected. But you know what? Sometimes being different than what people expect is a really good thing. And in the case of Jesus, it was an absolutely incredible thing. But do you know that Jesus has laid out what he wants his followers to be known for? He, he's laid out what he wants your brand to be and what he wants my brand to be. What he wants his church to be. To be known for all throughout scripture we find common ordinary people who are known 
for something. And if we just went down through and, and gave a list, many of you that have, have attended church a while, and maybe even some that are brand new to church or, or haven't been to church before, you might go ahead and, and be able to pick out some things that somebody in the scripture that you've heard about somewhere along the way is known for. Well, in Philippians, we have a story about the, the Apostle Paul writing to a church of common, ordinary people. And he says, look, this is what I want you to be known for. And one of the reasons he was able to say that is, is because of this. You see, prior to Paul coming to Christ, Paul was, was known as a, a one who, who would be willing to consent to murder. He was one that was known to being not just kind of against the church, but really outright against the church. He was one that wanted to punish the Christ followers and, and not only punish them, but eliminate them. And as Paul writes in Philippians, he gives us a truth that we need to take hold of. And, and I want us to get this today. You see, if, if we don't remember much of, of anything else that, that I say today, I want you to remember this, this truth that Paul pulls out of Philippians chapter 2. In Philippians chapter 2, Paul's going to teach us this principle that we is greater than me. That we is greater than than me. You see, sometimes when, when it comes to following Christ, when it comes to living our life, we forget about other people that might be involved. We, we forget that there's somebody else to consider. We go through life and we just get living life and we think it's all about us. And, and you know, really, that's easy to understand because when we come into this world as a baby, what happens? When, when we need something, we cry, Right? And, and, and mom or dad just runs to the rescue and then we get a little older and we need something and we ask and, and mom or dad or, or somebody else just runs to the rescue and, and then finally at some point in life some have parents that say get it yourself consider somebody else and, and then others they, they hang on to them a, a little bit longer but we begin to negotiate our way and we begin to come to the conclusion that I'm not the only one in this world i'm not the only one in this relationship but there's still a tendency for you and i to think me i is greater than we and paul writes in the first 11 verses he says i want you to understand something that when it comes to following christ when it comes to what the church needs to be known for when it comes to living for Jesus each and every day. We need to come to the conclusion and we need to be absolutely convinced that we is far greater than me. Let's take a look at what he writes. He says in verse number one, Philippians chapter two, he says, therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any affection and mercy Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out, not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. He says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking on the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father and let's take a, a look at what paul teaches us in these couple of verses that that we see taking place in Philippians chapter 2 in verse number 1. One of the things that happens in Philippians chapter 2 in verse number 1 is a simple truth that Paul points out, and, and here's what he, what he says. If, if we could just go ahead and update the language and put it in maybe a modern vernacular, uh, Paul goes ahead and says, Church, I want you to remember this. As, as you're following Christ, here's what I want you to do. I want you to get over yourself. 
just a, a real simple thought process. He says that there's this thing called life and there's other people in it and, and you're not the only one. He starts off and he says, if there's any, any encouragement, he says, if, if there's any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, he says, fulfill my joy by what? Being like-minded. Having the same love, being of, of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. He says, let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Paul gives us something that's, that's really incredible. It's, it's bare bones basic, but, but it's extremely incredible. And, and, and here's what Paul goes ahead and, and begins to, to, to share with us. He says, look, he says, we is greater than me. So, so here's what we have to remember. We're in this together living for Christ. That's the first thing that, that he tells us in the first four verses of Philippians chapter 2. Here, here's what he says. He says, we're in this together living for Christ. He says, if I can tell you something about the, the Christian life, that, that it's this truth. We're in it together, and we're living for Christ. The first four verses tell us how to live our life for someone other than ourselves. He says, if there's any love, if there's any encouragement, if, if there's any good thing that you can take from your relationship with Christ, here's what I want you to understand. When it, when it comes to living the Christian life, here's what it's supposed to be. He says, I need you to, to say no to selfishness. Let, let's just be honest. How many of you ever have a hard time saying no to, to, to being selfish? And, and, any, anybody tend, tend to go ahead and say, man, I, I want my way. I want to do my thing. I, I'd really like the, the argument to end my way. I'd really like my spouse to, to do what I want to do because, well, you know, I'm right. We, we, we go ahead and, and, and we, we parent from a standpoint, not always for, from what, what's, what's necessarily best or right, but, but maybe from just what, what we want, what we want the outcome to be. Why is that? Because inside of each and every one of us, there's this little thing called a selfish streak. And Paul says, look, here, here's what I need you to do. If there's any love in your heart for Jesus... If there's any encouragement that comes from following him, he says, would you give me some joy and, and let me see it? Here's what I would love for you to do. I would love for you to go ahead and say no to selfishness. But sometimes saying no to selfishness is difficult because it costs us something, makes us feel different. It, it makes our life look just a, a little bit different. And, and Paul writes and says, look, here, here's really what needs to happen. Because of the love that you've seen Jesus display, because of the way he's lived his life, here's, here's what I need you to do. I need you to say no to, to selfishness. You see, in the first four verses, he's telling us how our life should be and could be as we follow Christ in the next few verses, he's, he's going to go ahead and tell us in verse number five and uh, down why it needs to be that way and what we can do to make it that way. He says, I need you to, to say no to selfishness. He says, just, just consider somebody else. But he, he doesn't stop there. He, he tells us, he tells us this truth. He says, let each of, of, of you let, or he says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. He, he gives us a, a real simple truth that we need to value others. He says, when we're in this together and we're living for Christ, one of the things that we do is we say no to selfishness, but we begin to, to go ahead and say, I'm going to value someone else. You know, one of the things that Paul is teaching the church at Philippi, and he's, he's teaching you and I today, is, is this people have value beyond what they can do for us people have value beyond what they can do for us and sometimes we we only value people because of of what they can do for us and 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 when they can do something for us we suck the value out of them and he says look the, the church isn't supposed to be that way 
You you need to to value others because they are the creation of Christ. You need to to value other believers because they have been redeemed and purchased with the, the same shed blood that you have been purchased with. They are forgiven followers just like you are. You need to value them. We need to value others that don't know Jesus because God has a plan that's incredible for their life and would love nothing more than to see them come to be his follower. He says, I need you. As a Christ follower in the church, I need you to say no to selfishness, and I need you to see the value in others. I want to tell you something. The person that's sitting next to you, they've got value. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter how old they are. They have value. Just a a few weeks ago, I went and spoke to the, the DECA students at, at, Avon High, at Avon High School, and there's about 100 a, a students gathered there, and it was just like a 15-minute talk on, on some principles that they're learning and, and dealing with, and, and here's what we walked away with, that I wanted them to know in just a short time with a, a few illustrations and thought processes that they would connect with is that they are valued. And when I left that room, my former baseball coach and one of the principals said, I want to thank you for coming and sharing because they needed to know their value. You know what that told me? Tells me something about them that's the same for for me and for you. People need to know that they have value. And the Apostle Paul says, church, no no matter where you're at, We can say no to selfishness, and we can say yes to the value of others and recognize that they have value. That that God has a plan and purpose for for their life just as he does for each of ours. Then he he says something else that's really simple. He says, let each of you look out not only for your own interest, but for the interest of of others. He says, let's be in this together. Let's not be selfish. Let's not go ahead and leave others with the idea they don't have a value. But he says, let's not only talk about their value, but let's show some concern for others. Paul says, if we're going to live for Christ together, one of the things that we need to do is be willing to say no to selfishness and yes to meeting the needs in somebody else's life. And can I tell you something? We live in a world that is filled with needs. We live in a world that has people that are hopeless and helpless, and often the church looks at them and says, wow, they're hopeless and helpless. What's wrong with them? I want to tell you something. What's wrong with them is the same thing that's wrong with every one of us when we don't have Jesus. They need the hope and the help that only Jesus can give. And they need someone that knows Jesus to be willing to value them like Jesus values them. They need someone to look beyond the own needs in their life. They need somebody to consider the interest of them instead of just considering the interest of themselves and to be willing to say, look, I'm going to say no to myself and I'm going to say yes to Jesus and valuing them and I'm going to look on their need and I'm going to get where they are and I'm going to do what I can to make a difference in their life. You say, how, how does that happen? Well, Paul goes on and he, he writes in the next verse and he says, let this mind be in you. In verse number five, he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He says, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. He says, therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and of those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You see, in the first four verses, Paul talks about us being in this together. And he says, this is what you need to do. And he says, and by the way, this is what Jesus did. He says, and I would suggest that you follow him. So he gives us a a real simple breakdown. He he says, look, we need to remember that we is greater than me, and this is how we we go ahead 
and become like Christ. So, so let's just talk about this aspect as he writes to the, the people at Philippi, and he says, look, here's, here's, what's the, here's what the deal is. Together, we become like Christ. He just looks at the church, and he says, this isn't something that just one person needs to do. It's not just something that somebody next to you needs to do. It's something that we all need to do. He says, together, become like Christ. Well, what does that, that mean for you and for me? When, when we read down through what Jesus did in, in verse number 5, as, as it's described by Paul, he says, let this mind be in you. He says, you have a choice. You can choose to do it, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. What does it take for you and I to take a step and become a little more like Christ? I want you to j just listen in for, for just a minute because this year we're giving a lot of attention to you and I taking our next step in faith. To making our, our next step in becoming a little more like Christ. Christ. You see, the first thing that, that Jesus did that Paul said, I would encourage you to let this mind be in you, let this attitude be in you, let this action be in you, let this behavior be in you. First thing that you see Jesus was willing to do was to sacrifice. It, it, it means that, that Jesus coming to earth, it cost him something. He was willing to, to empty himself. He was willing to leave the glory of heaven and come and walk in this sin-filled world. He was willing to, to leave the perfection and to come and walk among people like you and me. There was a sacrifice. It cost him something. Do you know what keeps more of us than anything else than from, from becoming more like Christ? I want to tell you what, what it is. It's, it's real simple. It's sacrifice. It'll cost us something. We'll have to give up a habit. We'll have to watch what we say. We'll have to, to get uncomfortable where we're already comfortable and, and do some things that we know Jesus wants us to do that he's laid out in his word. But, but we tend to say, look, I'm, I'm comfortable. And, and if, I, if I really were to sacrifice, it would cost me something. I'd have to quit. I'd have to give up. I'd have to start. And, and, and we can lay some things out, but here's what, what Paul said uh, about you and I together becoming more like Christ. He says it's possible, and here's how you do it. He says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He was willing to sacrifice, and when Paul said, let this mind be in you, I want to tell you something. It was the Holy Spirit writing through him, and the Holy Spirit isn't going to guide Paul to write something that you and I are not capable of doing with his help. He said, be willing to sacrifice. Be, be willing to sacrifice. Let me ask you something. What are you willing to sacrifice to become more like Christ? What are you willing to give up so that you can go up and, and be more like Jesus? What are you willing to let following Christ cost you so that you can reach someone else for him? You see, the Apostle Paul knows what he's speaking of because he's writing to, to the people at Philippi, and he's writing from a Roman prison. And he's saying, look, I, I want to tell you something. You can make a sacrifice. It's possible. It's amazing that many people would say, when, when you go through Philippians, it's the pathway to joy. For Paul, it was the pathway to joy through prison. Even though his circumstances changed, he said, I'm going to continue to sacrifice. I want to continue to follow Jesus. He says, this is what I am willing to let it cost me. So, so church, let me ask you today, what are you willing to sacrifice to become more like Jesus? Paul didn't stop there. He didn't say, look, we can just go ahead and sacrifice. He said Jesus was, was a servant. He says he was willing to sacrifice, and then, then he says this, he, he was willing to be a servant. Well, what does that mean? He was willing to serve people that couldn't do anything for him in return. Think about it. He, he, he was willing to give his very best and to live his very best he was willing to serve the lowest of the low and didn't expect anything in return he says you can come and follow me you can come and trust me 
In fact, I would love for you to, to come and follow me, and I would love for you to serve others, but, but my coming and serving you is not predicated on what I get out of it. It wasn't a contract. It, it, it wasn't a, a scenario where he said, okay, I'll sacrifice, and I'll come and serve. If you do A, B, C, D first, no, absolutely not. It, it was to serve. So, so let me ask you this. Maybe we would do well to ask the question, who am I serving? Maybe we would do well to, to ask the question, why am I serving? Because can I tell you this? When you serve, only when you're leading the way, you're not serving. Now that might tick some of you off, but hey, that's just the way it is. Jesus washed some feet along the way. G Jesus laid some, some things out that, that we, we see from, from a standpoint of, of what it really is to be a servant's heart, what it is to, to live a, a servant's life. And, and, and when we think about Jesus, he was willing to, to sacrifice, he was willing to serve. So who am I serving, and, and how much am I willing to serve? How much am I willing to serve? How far will I go for the cause of Christ. How about this? There's, there's the word obedience. It says, in being found in appearances, a man, he humbled himself and became obedient. Obedient. Why is that important? Because it says he submitted. He, he submitted to the plan of the Father. He became obedient even unto death. Do you know that that the Romans were so cruel at crucifying, they didn't do it to their own people. It was such a humiliating and torturous form of death. Yet, yet Paul writes and says he became obedient. He submitted. Obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He was willing to, to submit. He was willing to say, okay, I'm going to obey. And so so we, we need to ask the question, what am I willing to submit to for, for the cause of Christ? What area of my life do I need to say, okay, Father, I want to follow you. Enough of me. I need to consider someone else, and that first someone else is, is, is the Father, what he's calling us to do. I need to consider others around me. I need to submit my life to the leadership of the Father that he's placed in us, I need to submit my life to, to his word. But you know, he said he's willing to even not just be obedient, but to suffer death. See, if I'm really going to become more like Christ, I want to take a, a step to, to become more like him. Paul says there's some, some sacrifice, there's some serving, there's some obedience, but, but he says, you know what, it, it includes some suffering. There's going to be some, some pain along the way. Now, if I asked for a show of hands right now and said, hey, how many of you want to volunteer to suffer? Most people would say, no, count me out. Most people would say, I, I really don't, don't want to do that. And if people did raise their hand, somebody would say, wow, I've got a few doctor friends that you need to see. Because it's just not like us to, to want to, to say, okay, I, I want to experience pain and maybe some loss, some rejection in life. But, but when we look at what Paul wrote, Paul was, was really telling us that when we follow Christ and, and live a life for him, we may have the, the cost of sacrifice. We need to, to be a servant. We need to be obedient and be willing to submit. But, but we also, we also need to realize that if we're going to be like Christ, we're going to suffer with Christ. There's going to be some hardships along the way, some things that maybe we didn't necessarily sign up for, maybe something that we didn't see coming. But here's the reality. It'll help us become more like him. Paul said, look, Together, we can do it. Together, we can, we can make that difference. How much am I willing to suffer? 
Am I willing to sacrifice? Am I willing to serve? Am I willing to submit? Am I willing to suffer? Am I, am I willing to be serious in my faith to become more like Christ? Well, we could stop right there at verse number 8. But he says that God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Paul tells us that together we're lifting up Christ. In verses 9 to 11, Paul says God promised to exalt Christ. But he teaches us a principle in what he's just given us that you and I today. He says one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess at the name of Jesus. But until that day comes, here's, here's what you and I are supposed to be doing in our life. Together, we're lifting up Christ. Now, how do we lift up Christ? We lift up Christ by considering someone else. We lift up Christ by valuing someone else. We lift up Christ by being willing to sacrifice, by be, being willing to serve and submit, by being willing to suffer. We lift up Christ by pointing people to him by the way we live. And the Bible teaches us a, an incredibly important principle for every one of our lives in this passage. And it repeats it in Luke chapter 14. It says, For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. There's something that comes from the pen of Paul. There's something that comes from the pen of Luke. That's a, a true statement that we were able to see in the life of Christ, but Luke writes and he says, whoever does this, this is what's going to happen. He says, when we go ahead and take a path of humility, at some point in time, at some point in time, they, they will be lifted up, meaning there, there's going to be more than always taking the humble path. When we follow Christ and we take on humility and become more like him, at some point in time, at some point in time, we'll see that it's worth it. He says, why is we greater than me? He says, because when, when we go ahead and live the Christian life, we're thinking about others. We're not just thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about others. And when we do that, we are lifting up the name of Jesus. Can you imagine what it would be like to be known as a Christian and as a church that truly believes that we is greater than me, that we, we're not the only Christian and that we're not the only church and that together we can get more done and that we consider the needs of others and that we value others and that we begin to go ahead and meet needs in their life, and that together we say, look, let's sacrifice and serve, and let's submit, and, and let's be willing to suffer. Why? So that we can lift up the name of Jesus, because Paul says this is how his name is lifted up. He says one day every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess, but until then, Christ is lifted up by my action and your action each and every day in our life. You see, that's why the first four verses matter so much. Because how we live is how we lift up Jesus Christ. In verse number 12, he says this. He says, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. He says, you've listened and you've followed, not, not just when I was there. You're not just doing it when, when a parent is there, but, but you're doing it day in and day out. He says, but... Now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. He says, do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. He says, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. He says, yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and the service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason, you also be glad 
and rejoice with me. Paul says, you know what? We're lifting him up together. But he says, as we lift him up together, we're to be the light and the word of life for Christ. He says, as we follow him together, he says, we, we need to live for Christ. We need to become like Christ. We, we need to, to understand that we lift up Christ. Why do we lift up Christ? Because day in and day out, here is the Christian responsibility. We're supposed to live out our salvation. What, why are we supposed to live out our salvation? When, when we look and, and see, he says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and do for his good pleasure. So, some people think, man, I've got to be busy around the church. I'm working for my salvation. No, uh -uh, that's not what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, let the grace of God have an effect in your life to where you want to live for him, because how you live is what other people see. And that's why in the first four verses, he says you need to consider someone else. You need to consider the value that somebody else has and, and the value that Christ has put on them. He says, live out your salvation. He says, give careful attention to how you live. And he says, do it together. You know what that means? That we're supposed to encourage one another in this thing called life. We're supposed to encourage each other to, to live more like Christ and more for Christ. Why is it important? He says in verse number 15 that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life. He says, holding fast the word of life. He says, you need to live together like Christ because you're the only light that some people will see he says it's a dark world that's hurting and has a need and he says church together you're supposed to meet that need he says you meet that need as a light you meet that need as holding fast to the word of life the word of life is, is Christ his truth his word. Why? Because it's powerful. It's alive. It changes lives. So today, as, as we gather and, and, and we look at what Paul says in Philippians chapter 2, Paul starts off and he says, this is how you need to live. This is why you need to do it. Because Jesus took upon himself the form of a sacrificial servant that was obedient in suffering. And he says, because he did that, we can do that for him. And he says, we can do that together. Would you bow your heads with me for just a moment? In just a moment, we're going to sing a verse of invitation hymn. And today... want to ask you are you certain that you know Christ as your Savior and then I want to ask you this if you do know Christ as your Savior what's the next step that you need to take are you willing to sacrifice are you willing to serve you willing to be obedient? You willing to suffer? You see, Jesus wants us to become more like him. And every day is an opportunity to do just that. So today, if you don't know Christ, make this a time where you come and know him where you place your faith and trust in, in what he's done for you by giving his life on the cross by rising again on the third day maybe you do know him and as you know him you 
would say, I know I need to take a step to become more like you. And maybe you know exactly what that step is. Today, I would encourage you to take that step. As we stand and sing in just a moment, I just want to ask you if, if you got a want to in your heart to come and pray or to come and talk with someone, just step out and do that. If you know the words of the song, you can sing along. Maybe you got a prayer request that you want to pray about right where you are. Certainly, please feel free to do that. Would you stand with me, please? Father, we come to you today. We ask you to have your way in our hearts and in our lives. Father, not just in this invitation time, but Father, as we leave this place, as we go to, to live our life for you in our places of work, in our homes, amongst our families, God, work in us. In Christ's name. stood before creation eternity in your hands you spoke the earth into motion my soul now stands you stood before my failures carried the cross for my shame My sin weighed upon your shoulders My soul now to stand What can I say Father, as we join our hearts in prayer, Lord, I pray that you would help each and every one of us in the days that are ahead of us in this year to be willing to take our next step, whether it's a, a next step in coming to know you or whether it's a next step in sharing our faith or joining a life group. Father, reading our Bible, praying on a daily basis. God, whether it's a next step of, of giving. Father, next step of, of praying for a friend or family member that needs to know you. Lord, I, I pray that you'll help us to take that next step. For it's in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to thank you for coming and gathering with us today as our ushers have, have prepared to help us receive our offering at this time, and they're coming at this time. I want to remind you that you can take out your worship guide, detach that, and and uh, place that in the uh, offering plate uh, with your, your name, any prayer request, any, any of those type of things that, that uh, we can help you with. We want to encourage you to do that. If you're a first-time guest uh, here today, please just attach that. Bring it out to uh, the Connection Center. We love the opportunity to be able to connect with you. I'm going to ask Dave Thomas to come on up at this time. Uh, he's going to ask the blessing on the offering, and then he's going to tell us about an opportunity that we have as a church to go ahead and take a next step locally to make a difference in the world for Christ. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we do come to you now thanking you for grace and mercy and for an opportunity to serve in this church. I'm glad that the church is service-minded. Bless this offering that we're about to take. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Pastor, I'm not crazy. You may think I'm crazy, but I'm not crazy. <laughs> I, I've done some crazy things. It's true. I've thought some crazy thoughts, but I'm not crazy. For the most of my life, I thought I was. And then something happened. I met Mike Stevenson. Yeah, that guy's crazy. All right, so I'm here to present a little bit about the Indianapolis Boys and Girls Club. On the screen in just a second, you're going to have uh, some pictures of some of the kids that we work with. A brief history about the Boys and the Girls Club. It was the year 1860. Three ladies from Hartford, Connecticut, they seen some kids in need. And they thought, we got to get these guys doing something more positive, something better with their lives. So that was the year that the first Boys and Girls Club was created. On the screen in front of us, we have Boys and Girls Today from the Lagore Boys Club located on Minnesota Street. That's about two miles north of the old Indianapolis airport. You know, when you see pictures like this, it reminds me of a photo where you got these pictures with little bitty dots like a million dots on this photo and you don't know what it really says and you look at it real closely and you see something differently that's what I see when I see these pictures because 54 years ago my brother and I walked to this same boys club and was on that stage with them May 2nd 1965 that was the day that our father died I was seven my brother was nine and we would go there after school we lived there in the summer. So I can see myself in those pictures as you see them. Someone might want to say, what would a volunteer do at the boys club? Just be yourself. That's what I do. I take a bunch of board games in there. I've taken so many board games in there, they gave me a locker. And I can just lock them up and they say, that's Dave's stuff, stay out of it. We play Connect Four tournaments and we have uh, mentorship programs, opportunity to talk to the kids. Really, a volunteer would just need to be somebody that loves children. The end game is to get the boys and girls to go to camp, like a Camp Kare. We took four children last year to camp to expose them to the love of Jesus Christ. The goal this year is 20. Now, there's, a one, there's two pictures on here that we may see that are by themselves. One is Chloe, and the other boy is Carla. Those children are like many of the kids there. They're considered at risk. For two years, I've been going to the boys' club, and Chloe is one of the girls that reminds me of my daughter, Laura. So you have connections with these people. She's been telling me for two years that her mother's getting ready to get a house for she lives with her grandmother for two years. Harley's the same way, lives with his aunt for the last two years. So we're looking for volunteers that come, and they want to come to the club and say, well, you could spend an hour a week, an hour a month. I go there two or three, four times a week. So there's really no time commitment on, what, on when that you need to go do this. But let me tell you one good thing, and I'll be done. Chloe is one of the girls that is at the club, she came to the Iwana program last week with her two sisters. And when she came here, they gave her a start zone, which is essentially God's simple plan of salvation. So we took her home and her two daughters, and she says, can you leave the light in the car on so I can memorize my verses? And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. So if you want to volunteer at the Boys Club, I do have some background checks that must be done. It costs 20 bucks. And I was thinking, 20 bucks a volunteer, then you gotta buy the Iwana books. There's another cost in there. So I was thinking, yes, there is a cost in service, but doing nothing costs a lot more. Absolutely. Pastor. Dave, stay up there real quick. Let, let me ask you this. How many of, of those um, children do you think don't live with mom or dad? I would say 30 to 50%. And Thirty to fifty percent don't live with mom or dad. Got two hundred kids in the club a day. Two hundred kids that rotate in and out. 
uh, don't live with mom or dad, and it's honestly no more than a 15-minute drive from here to, to out there, maybe uh, if traffic's a little heavy, a, a little more, but you go out on Wednesday afternoons a lot and, and other times um, to, to serve. You, you're making a difference and reaching people for Christ. I want to tell you something. We have people in our community because that is our community, okay? Indianapolis is our community. We're, we're, it, we're a bedroom community of Indianapolis. Some of you went to the Lagor Boys Club uh, growing up because back then it was just the Boys Club. They had uh, something else. Now they've combined. Uh, and and uh, Dave Veronic used to take us to the, the Boys Club, and we would go in and play basketball with different ones that, that were there and just try and, and be a witness and, and let them know that somebody cared. And it's an opportunity for our church to be able to connect with them and to say, hey, uh, there's people that love you. It's one thing to tell somebody that God loves you, pat them on the back and walk away. It's another thing to say, hey, let me tell you that God loves you, and I'm going to show that love to you right here, right now, and I'm going to walk with you through life. And uh, Dave is, is doing an incredible job down there, and if you want to get connected, I would encourage you to see him immediately following the service. A, a, a incredible opportunity. If you don't have the $20 to go and serve, we will pay for it for you if you're serious about going and connecting with him and serving and giving back some of, of the opportunity that you have to make a difference in somebody else's life. Dave, thanks for doing that. Let's give him... Let's all stand. We're going to be dismissed in prayer. I want to thank you for coming out and being with us today. There's some announcements that are uh, in your worship guide, and I just want to encourage you to uh, read those announcements. Do all you can to participate in the opportunities that are ahead and coming our way. Let's go ahead and uh, close in prayer. A.J. Runkles, would you close us in prayer, please?